Hey again, everyone. I was watching one of Cardiff Electric's nonsensical streams about has-been and never-were celebrities recently. For those that don't know of Cardiff, he's a VTuber. Tuber. Like a potato. He was streaming a show that involved playing Howard Stern TV show clips from the 90s. Elvis, come in, please! And he ran into a problem frequently encountered by streamers on YouTube. Content ID strikes when playing small sections of fair use video content. The audio, generally background music, music embeds, or stingers can be enough to trigger the content ID bots. So if anybody out there has a puppet, uh, that's because they ripped me off. I just want to make that clear. So puppets are not transformative content. Uh, puppets will get a cease and desist. Sure, the audio tracks could be muted, but that requires a pretty quick finger hovering over the mute button, and it really disrupts the flow of the video when the sound abruptly drops out. But what if you could simply strip out the music altogether? Well, it takes a little time, a couple tools, and a little work, but it can be done relatively simply and effectively. The following is an encore presentation of The Howard Stern Show. Here's what I'll be going over in this one. First, I'll be downloading and installing FFmpeg. FFmpeg is a video processing application that runs in the command line, and there are a couple manual install steps that should be followed. If you're not comfortable using the Windows console, don't worry. Just follow along and it should make sense. Then I'll look at downloading and using Ultimate Vocal Remover with a couple real-world style example scenarios. With that, I'll also go for using FFmpeg to extract an audio track from a video file and then add it back to the video file after processing with Ultimate Vocal Remover, either as a single audio track or as a video file with multiple audio tracks. FFmpeg is open source software, so it's free, but the Windows code is built by a third party. Head over to the download site, which I've linked below, and download the latest Windows build. Once it's downloaded, right click on the zip file and select Extract. Once extracted, rename the folder to FFmpeg, and then move that folder to your C drive. To set up FFmpeg, type environment variables into the start menu search box and click it to open up the dialog box. Select user variables, then path, and then click edit. Click new and type the path C colon slash FFmpeg slash bin then click OK. You should now be able to run the FFmpeg command from any folder in your system. Later on, I'll use FFmpeg to pull an audio track from a video file to be processed by the next piece of software you'll need, which is Ultimate Vocal Remover. Ultimate Vocal Remover is a front end for a whole bunch of AI processing source separation models. Many are capable of separating vocals and background audio, but some are also able to denoise, remove reverb, and remove various instrumental components. Head on over to the Ultimate Vocal Remover GUI GitHub page to download the program, which I've linked below. Download and install the main application, and once that's complete, the source separation models can be downloaded from the download center found in the settings menu. The program interface is very simple. Just select your input files, your output file location, your output file format, and the processing options. Multiple input files can be processed in a queue, and many video files can be processed directly. But it should be noted that the output will not be remixed into the video, but rather will be output in the file format specified earlier. While the models are intended to separate vocals from instrumentals, many can also isolate dialogue from other background noise. I'm not going to go over each model or explicitly recommend one for any scenario, they are all quite effective, but some may work better with some audio tracks than others. For those that want to experiment even further, models can be run in series for even more processing options. When you're manipulating audio tracks with, from a video file, one thing you'll need to be aware of is keeping things synchronized. The easiest mistake to make is simply trimming a section of audio, making the file a different length. Sometimes this can happen when extracting or converting audio files to a different format. Ultimate Vocal Remover does a good job extracting audio, but to ensure there are no issues, you may want to do it with FFmpeg. 
In the Windows console, enter the command ffmpeg-i, and then within quotes, put the input file name dash vn dash a codec pcm underscore s16le dash ar44100 dash ac2 then within quotes specify the output name i'll go over recombining audio tracks with video files using ffmpeg in a few minutes but before I do, I just want to show a little bit of how some of the UVR models perform in a few situations. Most of the models will output two tracks, vocals and instrumental. I ran the extracted audio from one of those Howard Stern episodes through the MDX vocal fine-tuned model. Here's what the instrumental track sounds like. This did a great job of separating the music beds. You can hear how clearly they came through in the instrumentals track. Obviously we're looking for clean dialogue, so let's take a look at the vocal output. Here's the same track with the vocals isolated from the intro stinger. Hi Robin, I will do the most amazing thing ever. I will psychically go into a trance and contact the spirit of Elvis Presley. The following is an encore presentation of the Howard Stern Show. There are some faint noise artifacts after the separation, but they can often be cleaned up with noise reduction plugins. Here's another example. This one's a much better mix source track. It's from the intro to an episode of the uh, late 80s TV show Riptide. It has background music, terrible ADR punch and kick sound effects, and stereo mix dialogue. This should be a scenario where many of the UVR models perform very well. Here, have a listen. You have not changed a bit since high school, Nick Ryder. You are still taking the easy road. theatrics. Besides, you should have had them. Okay, man, let me see you get out of this one. Watch his feet. I got to thinking you really liked me. You led me on. What are you talking about? Here's a few seconds of the isolated instrumental track. Sometimes this catches sound effects, and sometimes they end up in the vocal track. It really just depends on the audio mix. This did a great job of separating the loud background music from the show's intro. You have not changed a bit since high school, Nick Ryder. You are still taking the easy road. No! I'm telling you, Nick, he's one hell of a fighter. He must have used every martial art that exists. It's all a bunch of theatrics. Besides, you should have had him. Okay, man, let me see you get out of this one. <laughs> Watch his feet. Another typical use case would be removing audio from a radio broadcast or otherwise noisy recording. I ran some digitized cassette recordings of a Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell episode through a couple models. Here's the intro announcer after source separation from the bumper music. To talk with Art Bell in the Kingdom of Nye, from east of the Rockies, dial 1-800-825-5033. West of the Rockies, including Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, and New Mexico, 1-800-618-8255. Unfortunately, I think trying to play any of the isolated instrumental track would trigger the content ID system. <laughs> I also tried running a radio play from the Golden Age of Radio series Suspense through one of the models. And once again, it did a great job of isolating the background orchestral music. In this scenario, the output vocals came through very rich and clean. Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Roma Wines present... Suspense! If you want to play a clip with the audio removed, you're going to want to mix the audio track and video file again. To do that, you can use FFmpeg from the command line similar to earlier. How you want to do this depends on how many audio tracks you want to use. In this first example, I'll mix one audio track and one video track. Use the command line FFmpeg-I and then your video file name in quotes, dash C colon V copy, 
which means copy the video track, dash C colon A AAC, which says re-encode the audio to AAC, and then specify your output file name in quotes. And we got we got the most incredible program for you. Do not, do not go away. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Roll it. Hey, it's Saturday night. Howard Stern Show. Is it still the summer show, Robin? No, I think they're just lopping off that summer thing and just calling it the Howard Stern Show. Yeah, well, to use more than one audio track, we're going to use FFmpeg's mapping feature. Enter the command FFmpeg I with your input video file name in quotes, then dash I and your first audio file track in quotes, then dash I and your second audio file track in quotes. Then dash map zero colon V, which tells FFmpeg to map the dash first map index one to your video. A. It says map the second input to audio. And then dash map two colon A, says match the third input to audio. Dash C colon V copy, which says copy the video track and then specify the output name in quotes. Depending on the specifics of your audio and video files, you may see some warnings here, but usually things will output correctly. I've re-encoded the Riptide clip to have two tracks, isolated dialogue and isolated music. If I had loaded up in VLC or any other player that supports multiple tracks, I can switch off between them. I got them. to thinking you really liked me. You led me on. What are you talking about? All right, you all right? Did you see him? Oh. Did he come by this way? Yeah, he took Natalie. But the minute this thing is over, you're a dead lady. So maybe he was going to try and kill somebody who would be passing on this route. There's an assassin in that building down there. Stop the parade now! It's got me hanging on the edge of my seat. When combined with a video downloader and a little FFmpeg know-how, Ultimate Vocal Remover can be a formidable weapon in the war against the overly aggressive content ID algorithm. I don't think that battle is going to get any easier, so maybe the only way to win is not to play, by stripping out the music with some AI tools. Please hit the like button or comment if you want to see me keep making videos. The YouTube algorithm hates this channel because it posts tutorial content, and people don't do complete watchthroughs on tutorial content. Without engagement to counter that, the videos don't get recommended, and the only people that will find them are people that will search for the topic directly, which is very few. But hitting that little thumbs up button can do a little bit to counteract that. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay human. To talk with Art Bell in the Kingdom of Nye from outside the U.S., first, dial your access number to the USA. Then, 800-893-0903. If you're a first-time caller, call Art at 702-727-1222.